Today we're going to look at this 1986 through 1989 Corvette electronic climate control, a C68 option. And the customer complains that when he hits a bump, the display blinks out and the buttons don't always work. So let's take a look inside. Two clips holding the faceplate on, one on each side. We will remove those with a flat blade screwdriver. We'll lift the faceplate gently away from the unit and we'll set that aside. Next we'll stand this up on end and there are a couple of clips, one on either side that we need to release in order to get the circuit board out. Okay. Common problems with these units are power supply capacitors that uh, dry out and short over time. So we will be replacing those. Those will be located here and here. Uh, we're gonna check this power resistor and resolder it if necessary. We're going to replace all of the bulbs while we're apart for everything else. Other things that fail on these are this particular connector becomes deformed over time. We'll see that soon. And the solder joints that mount this connector to the faceplate turn cold and break over time. So let's take a look at that now. Over time, this plastic connector, um, the, the pressure of the spring contacts deforms this plastic connector. If we look along the side, we'll see that it's sort of smile shaped instead of a straight line. And so the first thing that we'll try with this to, to fix the customer's problems is we will heat this connector up and reshape it. So let's do that now. First step is to remove the bulbs. We're going to turn them approximately a sixteenth of a turn counterclockwise and pull. We're using a, this is about a 250 watt heat gun. This is not a heat gun that would be used for stripping paint. Um, this is more for uh, uh, shrinking insulation and, and uh, other lighter work. So we're going to slowly heat the plastic connector. We're not looking to completely melt the plastic. We're just looking for the connector to sort of straighten itself out. And if we, if we watch real carefully, we'll see the connector actually pull itself back into a straight line. After it's pretty well straight, we're going to, so what we're doing is we're using the circuit board as a straight edge to uh, press the connector, press up against the connector. And uh, we're gonna hold it this way until the connector cools enough to solidify again. Uh, I usually hold it here for about two minutes. And if we look at the edge of that connector, we see that it's nice and straight again, and it'll make good contact with all 16 of those pins. So we have plugged this back into our test harness, and unfortunately the display is still intermittent. When I bump it around on the desktop, it's still intermittent, and buttons are still not working. So uh, what that means is that we're gonna have to continue further. Uh, we're actually gonna have to disassemble the faceplate in order to fix this problem. So if we take a look at the way the faceplate is constructed. Where the damn tools go. The damn kids. We see that the way that the factory has assembled this is that they've melted some plastic tabs to hold the circuit, the circuit board in place. Um, this has got to be the worst design I've ever seen. We're going to have to completely destroy this faceplate to get access to the solder joints that we need to repair. When we do that, we'll have to replace the faceplate. Fortunately, we do have replacement faceplate kits available to get access to the, the back side of the circuit board and the solder joints for this connector. We need to remove the faceplate. If we look carefully, we see switch contacts are already coming out the side of this, so we know that there are problems inside. We see several missing pins on the back side. 
those pins hold the um, switch contacts in place and because they're not there switch contacts are are moving all over and and that's probably the reason that the buttons aren't working okay so we're going to use a pair of side cutters and we're just going to trim these plastic rivets flush with the circuit board wherever we find one left we'll trim it okay and there's one there and unfortunately we only had a few of those holding this entire circuit board on the back we're going to lift the circuit board away and if we look sure enough the switch contacts have moved out of place they're filthy and that's why the buttons aren't working so we plug this back into our test harness for purposes of illustration if we look if we manipulate these solder joints we'll see one of these is responsible for backlighting issues we'll see another one of these is causing the display and LED problems that we're having we'll resolder all pins of this connector if we look at the solder joints on the display uh, especially if you're experiencing a dim display uh, we'll want to resolder the joints that uh, that connect that display to the circuit board so we'll do that as well uh, if you're having any problems with uh, an LED that's out, we supply new LEDs in the kit. So if you're having any problems with a burned out LED, uh, you can find that in the parts kit. And we've got uh, new bulbs as well. So let's get started. So with the next step, we're going to use our soldering iron. We're going to use a vacuum solder removal tool. And we will get rid of the solder on all 16 of those connections. So we're going to apply heat vacuum the solder away go to the next one okay it's it's a lot easier to get access to those connections if you uh, bend these three LEDs out of the way while you're working on it uh, again if you uh, if something breaks there are replacement LEDs in the kit after we remove the so the old solder we're going to resolder those connections using some solder supplied in the kit we're going to heat the junction where each pin meets the pad. So we're applying heat to both at the same time. We're going to feed in some fresh solder. And then we're going to remove the heat and let that cool. We should end up with a nice shiny connection when we're done. We'll move on to the next one and do the same thing. Apply heat. Feed in some solder remove the heat and let it cool all right when we finish resoldering this connector we should see that each of the 16 holes is completely filled in there are no no missing parts or parts that aren't filled in with solder we should see no bridges in between any two pins and everything should be nice and bright next we're going to resolder the display something we haven't shown you before is the true magic that is liquid flux uh, if you haven't worked with this stuff before, it is uh, it is really one of the it's one of the secrets of the uh, electronics world. Uh, if you can find it at all, it is absolutely wonderful to work with. One of the things it does is it cleans solder connections. So if you're dealing with extra corroded or extra uh, dirty solder connections, this does a wonderful job of cleaning those. But the other thing that it does is it changes the viscosity of solder. It makes the the solder much runnier and it makes the solder much more able to get down into all of the cracks and crevices uh, and, and uh, holes and spaces in the hole between the pin and uh, just, just really makes for, for really good clean solder joints. So we're going to use that here today. We have it in a small applicator bottle. We're just going to put some at the base of each of these uh, display connector pins. We're going to heat the combination of the pad and the pin we're going to feed in a very small amount of fresh solder and then we're going to remove the heat and let it cool and i'm taking about three seconds on each one of these pins you don't want to leave the heat on for a long period of time you definitely uh, don't want to move the pad around 
while the heat is applied. But if you're on there for two to three seconds, it should be fine. And at this point, the uh, the burned rosin looks uh, looks a little bit dirty. So next, we're going to take some rubbing alcohol and clean that off. I'm going to use some 91% uh, uh, isopropyl alcohol and a uh, an old nylon brush to clean off the rosin. And we'll just soak that. We'll brush it clean. We'll do that a couple more times. We'll take some compressed air and get rid of the alcohol. And we can see that those joints are nice and clean and crisp again. We're going to do the same thing on the other side of this display. We'll apply a small line of flux. We will We'll heat each pin for about three seconds, feed in a small amount of solder, remove the heat, and move on to the next pin. Once that cools down a little bit, we'll use some isopropyl alcohol and our toothbrush to clean away the liquid rosin. Uh, cleaning away the liquid rosin is really just a cosmetic thing. It's, uh, it is not electrically necessary. The rosin will not, uh, will not continue to eat the circuit board the way that uh, acid core fluxes do. But this makes it look like we know what we're doing. And again, we're checking for we're, we're checking to make sure that we don't have any solder bridges, which is uh, solder between any two pins, and everything looks nice and bright. We've done a good job here, so we'll move on. The kit comes with three new bulbs, so we're going to remove the old bulbs from their bases. We just uh, pull gently. We'll take the new bulb and put it back in the same way the old bulb came out. We'll do that for all three. And next, we will reinstall those into the board. We'll push them in place. We'll turn them about a sixteenth of a turn clockwise to lock them in place. We'll do that for all three. Put the third one in place. Okay. That finishes the electrical repairs to this. If you have a way to test the HVAC controller, it wouldn't be a bad idea to reassemble it and test it at this point, make sure everything is working properly. We definitely want everything working right before we install the new faceplate. All right, so next we're going to open up the faceplate kit. We're going to be very careful on this back side because uh, there are some plastic pins sticking up and we don't want those to break. And if we look, the new kit comes with new switch contacts for every single switch. We're going to remove those for now and set those aside. We'll get rid of the plastic and the foam. And we're going to turn the faceplate over and we're going to empty the buttons out. Now, not all buttons come out. These two buttons are captive. Uh, we're going to leave those in place. But the other buttons and the switch contacts, we're just going to set those aside. Okay, so next we're going to test fit the, uh, the faceplate kit. We're going to be gentle here because there's a very good chance that these pinholes are not entirely going to line up. Uh, the, uh, the left side typically lines up. The bottom row typically lines up but we're going to have some problems in this area. It's almost always necessary to hand fit the faceplate to the circuit board that you're using. So I'll show you how to do that here. Um, if we look, we need to expand this hole. We need to... This hole is fine. 
we need to expand this hole slightly to the right and if we look at these two holes they're they're nowhere close um, it, it's not possible to break these pins off they need to be there to hold the switch contacts in place so we definitely need to do this fitting process um, in, an, in order to do that, I'm going to use a, uh, a 1 8 inch drill bit and uh, we're just going to expand the size of these holes. Okay, this next part's going to be noisy so you won't be able to hear me, but essentially I have chucked up a, an 8 inch drill bit in my, uh, my Dremel tool and we're going to expand the holes here, 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 and here. Okay, now that's probably not good enough. We'll clean that off and we will test fit it again to see how close we are. This hole needs to be expanded to the right. This hole needs to be expanded to the left. The other holes look like they're lining up. To do this, I'm going to be very careful. Uh, there are some traces here that we're cutting toward. We're going to be very careful not to cut into those traces when we're expanding these holes. We're going to look at the circuit board from both sides to make sure that we don't cut into a trace on either side. And we're going we're going to expand that hole. To the right. We'll do the same thing and expand this hole to We can see we're right up against that trace, but we have not, and we're right up against this trace, but we haven't cut through them. Same thing for the back side of the board, we're okay. And if we look at it, uh, we have some fairly large holes on the back side of this, but uh, we have not cut through any traces, and we do have a fitted circuit board that fits flush to the face plate at this point. Okay, so next let's clean this up and get it put back together. We're going to use some compressed air and just make sure it's nice and clean. We're going to use some Windex, spray it on a paper towel, and we're going to wipe the face of the display. Just make sure it's as clean as possible. We'll make sure those bulbs are clean. And we're going to make sure all of the LEDs are lined up the way that they should be. To go back into the holes in the in the faceplate kit. Next we're going to put the buttons back in place. These are all the same so you can put any of these buttons anywhere. Just make sure that we have a button in each hole before we put this back together because we are going to glue on the faceplate kit and it would be a shame to forget one. We'll put these switch contacts in place Okay, and if we look at these, we have two tall ones that you see there on the bottom, and we have two short ones. The tall ones go on these temperature control buttons, the hotter and cooler buttons, like that. And the shorter ones go over here on our defrost or mirrors buttons and on the external temperature button. So once we have all of those in place we make sure that the, the plastic pins protrude through every hole. The plastic pins protrude through the holes in the switch contacts and they're all in place. We'll put our circuit board in place. I'm going to use some black tape uh, to hold everything in place while we're gluing this together. So 
So we're going to tape it on both ends. Okay. All right, so it's taped together. And because we have the ability to test this while it's on our bench, we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to make sure that we don't have intermittent display anymore, that it's nice and bright and it's completely readable. We're going to make sure that every single button works. Right now the external temperature light is flashing because there's an error code and there's an error code because I don't have it connected to a programmer module. If we look at every single button and every single LED, we see that everything is working. And we see absolutely, when we, we bump this on the desk, we see absolutely no intermittent behavior in the display or the LEDs. We make sure that the buttons still work. So everything is, is working the way that it should at this point. That's good news. Next, we're going to go ahead and glue this back together. All right, next we're going to use some 5-minute epoxy in order to attach this faceplate. Um, I'm going to squirt this out on a piece of uh, scrap plastic. We're going to use equal parts of resin and hardener. We're going to mix that liberally with a stick that we don't mind disposing of later. And we're going to put a drop on each, on the head of each of these plastic pins. We're going to try to keep that off of any electrical contacts on the board. It's not critical, but it will help the light bulbs to light up later on. Our goal is not to pack these holes full. Our goal is just to adhere the faceplate onto the circuit board. And okay. Uh, I do something different with these three holes that I've expanded. If, if I were to start putting um, this, this running epoxy down into those holes, it would absolutely um, jam up the button behind there. And so I'm, I'm going to use something different. Uh, do not put epoxy into the holes that you made larger. So now we're just going to wait for about five minutes. We're going to make sure these are completely covered. And we're going to wait for this glue to harden. And then we'll remove the tape and we will uh, we'll hit the, uh, the glue joints behind the tape. In the last few minutes, so we're going to remove the tape so that we can get access to the remaining glue points. And again, we're just going to mix up some 5-minute epoxy. Less this time. equal parts of resin and hardener. We're going to stir that together. I usually stir that for about a minute or until it turns a milky white. Shut up cameraman. Okay, and we're going to apply that to our remaining glue points. We're not going to put this type of glue into the holes that we expanded. We're going to save those and uh, fill them with some hot glue later. 
Okay, and uh, we're just going to let those set up. We'll be right back with you. After the last epoxy sets up, we're going to use some hot glue to fill in the remaining holes. This does help with adhesion a little bit, but uh, the, the primary purpose of it is just to keep dust out of those switch contacts. Okay. And we'll let that cool for a second. After the glue sets, we're going to apply a ring of electrical tape. And the primary purpose of this electrical tape is just to keep dust out. Uh, since this is glued in place, we don't have the ability to uh, clean it. And so if dust or if bugs get in there, um, we're kind of out of luck. So we're, we're doing everything we can in order to shield that, to shield that, uh, the inside of this face plate. And it should look like that when you're done. Let's make sure there are none, none of the uh, hot glue stringies that are uh, in this connector in any way, shape, or form. Again, we'll clean it out before we put it all back together. Before we put this back together, we're going to replace a couple of capacitors on the main logic board. Um, over time, these capacitors are known to uh, have their electrolytes dry out. And uh, when that happens, they will short cause fuses to blow. So we're just going to swap those out. They're not bad in this case. But we want it to last as long as it can. So I'm heating the edge of the old capacitor and gently prying it out with a flat blade screwdriver. And we'll pull that one out. If we notice, there are positive and negative markings on the board that show us which way to put the, the new part. New capacitors are included in the kit of parts that we sell to fix this HVAC controller. And again, we do see a positive marking here and again here. And again, we're using our soldering iron and vacuum solder removal tool to clear out those holes. Sometimes we have to do that from both sides. Next, we will take one of the large capacitors from the kit and install it in the opening nearest the connector. We'll bend those pins apart slightly so that we can solder it. And again, we're, the positive end, which is marked on the board, is also going to line up with the crimped end. If you forget, there are markings on the capacitor that tell you which end is negative, and it points to this terminal. We're going to do the same thing with the small capacitor. The small capacitor has its positive terminal here with the crimped end uh, be down in this video. And again, we'll bend those pins apart to hold it in place. So we're going to apply some heat to the junction between the pin and the pad. We're going to feed in a generous amount of solder and we're going to remove the heat. We'll do the same thing on the other side of that capacitor. And we're going to apply more heat here because this is, uh, we're actually heating up a very large ground plane when we do this. So this one, this side can take quite a bit more heat. I left the, the soldering iron for about 10 seconds there. We'll do the same thing with this terminal of the small capacitor. We're going to heat that for about 10 seconds, feed in a generous amount of solder wait for everything to smooth out. We'll do the same thing here. A 
Okay. And next we'll take our side cutters and we will trim those close to the board so that nothing shorts out when we put it back in the case. The board that we're working with did not have um, the third electrolytic capacitor that is common in these controllers, but uh, we have one here for purpose of illustration. So uh, sometimes when we turn the, the board over, we'll see a third com uh, capacitor that was added here at the input at the input connector. Um, the positive end is soldered to pin four. The negative end is soldered between pins 12 and 13, so it actually forms a solder bridge between those two pins. And if we look underneath them, the circuit board shorts those together as well. Uh, if your board is equipped with one of these, I would consider replacing this capacitor. Um, the way to do that is basically to clip the positive end above where this diode is connected. We're going to heat the negative side. We're going to remove that old part. Okay. We're going to bend the new capacitor to look like the old capacitor. That's essentially what it looks like. We're going to bend the leads on that new capacitor. It's sort of an L shape and we're going to trim it short and then we'll solder it in place. We will we'll solder the positive end to pin D4. Yep. All right. We will solder the negative end between pins 12 and 13. And we'll press that flat against the board. Okay, let's put this back together. We'll press the main logic board into the faceplate. We'll notice that the connector is a lot tighter when we put this back together. We will slot the main logic board into the slots in this plastic housing. And we'll put that back together. We'll put on our metal clips and the flat side of the metal clip goes forward in both cases. And we'll test it. Here we see the working controller. We see all the buttons work. All the LEDs work. The display is nice and bright. We do still have some protective plastic in front of this that we're going to leave on there until we give it back to the customer. This is another successful repair from Batty.com. If you found this useful, we would appreciate it if you'd check out our web store where you can find the parts and the tools that we used for these repairs. We'd like to thank you for watching. Thanks to your support, 10 Americans have jobs.